guys? I'm Chill Pill, and welcome back to another episode of Why Did I Do That? And welcome back to another episode of Black Sheep Reviews. You guys are so lucky. For clicking on this video, I'll be granting you all one wish. Anything your heart desires. Go ahead. Ask away. Is that... No, no, not gonna do that. Or that. Especially not that. Alright, enough. Enough. Tell you what. I think I know a way to make everyone happy. Since things got a little bit heavy with Feels February, how about I review a happier game this month to even out the vibe? Sound fair? That's not what you wish for? Well, too bad. We're doing it anyways. And I think the latest game from publisher Way Forward would be just perfect for lightening the mood. Everybody's favorite purple haired genie. Well, half genie technically. Shantae is back in her fourth butt kicking and wiggling adventure, and it's up to her to save the people of Sequin Land once again. So, grab your favorite pair of dancing shoes, put some super silky cream in your hair, and let's get ret to go as we take a look at Shantae, Half Genie Hero. One more magic trick before we start. Want to see a cool one? Check this out. Shazam! This is Banjo. Say hi, Banjo. Move over, Robin Williams and Shaquille O'Neal. There's a new genie in town. Don't go too far, Robin. You were awesome. Shaq, you keep going. I don't wish I had junk food from here to the sky. Why not? Higher than high, then you got junk food from here to the sky. I am Kazam! Well... I guess she's not exactly new. Shantae's been around since the days of the Game Boy Color, but now she's back, looking fine as ever, and is ready to hair whip the crap out of some baddies once again. I hopped on the Shantae Express back when Pirate's Curse came out and have loved the unique platforming Metrovania series ever since, so my hopes for Half Genie Hero were very high. In WayForward's latest iteration of the franchise, we follow Shantae, duh, who else would it be? Who was recently fired from being the resident guardian genie of Scuttletown after the nefarious pirate Risky Boots destroys the city. With the town in disarray and Risky having fled the scene, it's up to Shantae, with a little help from her friends, to collect special parts scattered all over Sequin Land in order to help her uncle Mimic build a machine he invented to protect Scuttletown from future pirate attacks, which will, hopefully, get her job back as the guardian genie. If you played the original game on the GBC, this story may sound a bit familiar to you. Basically, they took the plot from the first Shantae and then copy-pasted into a new game with better assets, which makes me wonder if Half Genie Hero was actually intended to be a soft reboot. Since all the other games in the series have shown some continuity up to this point, and WayForward didn't explicitly say this was a remake of the GBC Shantae, it's all the more jarring when the devs reuse an old story and ignore the lore from the rest of the series completely. But Despite its recycled plot, the dialogue and delivery are what keep the game entertaining and overflow with the witty charm the series is known for. Yep, like I said, witty. While the characters themselves aren't that fleshed out, it's their dialogue that makes their individual personalities really stand out. Heck, even the NPCs that had absolutely zero bearing on the plot had me laughing out loud. The tongue-in-cheek banter between characters is very well written, and it certainly doesn't shy away from breaking the fourth wall from time to time. Which is actually putting it lightly, since some of these jokes basically reach through the TV screen, grab you by the shirt collar and say, GET IT? DO YOU GET IT? If the dialogue has a blind spot, it would definitely be the lack of voice acting. There are only a few characters that actually get a voice, all of which are done by the talented Christina V, but when they do speak, it's only little snippets at a time. Here, boy! This is a huge disappointment, especially considering that the few lines she has, Christina delivers with fervor. The games are over 15 years old, why no voice acting at this point? Oh. Oh, I see. I guess it's true. Money talks. Or, in this case, doesn't. Huh. They were so close, too. And what's this? There could have been animated cutscenes? Man. Can I go back in time to throw my money at the screen harder? 
The art direction WayForward went with this time around was pretty polarizing. There are the Shantae purists who would have preferred to keep the classic pixelated style from the earlier games, and then there are those who really like the new smoothed out look of the vector art designs in HGH. That's half genie hero, not human growth hormone. I fall somewhere in between these two camps. I like the original style, but the new direction gives me the opportunity to really appreciate the detail in Shantae's great, big, beautiful, bouncing hair. I think the new direction will help the game's overall staying power. Games with a smoother, cartoonish aesthetic to them tend not to show their age as badly as their more pixelated or 3D cousins years down the road. Kinda like the OG DuckTales on the NES versus the remastered version, which, by the way, is also a way forward game. The character art is really cute, well drawn, and vibrant. As per usual with the Shantae series, the women are all drawn sexy and sassy. You have the sexy sassy genie, the sexy sassy snake lady, and the sexy sassy blobfish. And all the guys are depicted as big and dumb. Here's the big dumb zombie, the big dumb guard, and the big dumb mare who looks surprisingly like a certain fungus person that likes to help a certain plumber. Risky Boots, aka My Pirate Bay, and all the barons and other enemies are looking pretty sharp with a fresh coat of HD paint too. The background and level designs also deserve their fair share of praise. The picturesque environments are colorfully diverse and the illusion of depth really makes the 2D character sprites pop. One minute, you're leaping from ring to ring in a factory that turns kidnapped girls into mermaids. The next, you're butt sliding through the jungle on a huge conveyor belt. And then, you're zooming around the sky on what just might be the most magical of magic carpet rides. Eat your heart out, Aladdin. I also love just how animated all the characters and enemies are. Heck, even when they're just talking to each other, the characters are constantly bobbing around like some 1930s cartoon. Some are more exaggerated than others. For example, would someone please let Roddy Tops go to the bathroom already? But Shantae really steals the show with her cute, provocative belly dances and, most importantly, Dead Butt Wiggle! Twerking and working that tush since 2002, baby! Guys, for seriously, this soundtrack is effing amazing. The music is so catchy and fun, it even makes me want to dance. Me! A guy who knows he moves with all the grace and precision of a dolphin trying to escape a fishing net when doing anything that requires rhythm. Jake Kaufman, the composer for the past three Shantae games, came back to write the music for Half Genie Hero, and I can say that, after having listened to all the soundtracks, this game is most definitely his best work in the series. It's pretty cool to hear how his music has evolved since the days of the Game Boy Color. A lot of the same themes are reused in each of the games, and as the series has grown over the years, Kaufman's rearrangement of the melodies has only gotten better and better. With a couple exceptions, the entire soundtrack is upbeat and fun, but the thing that really impressed me was the wide variety of music styles and instruments used throughout the game. The title theme is an epically orchestrated piece that lets you know right from the start you're in for a good time. There are songs that combine traditional Middle Eastern instruments with dance beats, Some awesome guitar solos thrown in just for good measure. And the song that plays during the first mission is hype as hell. Dancing, 
This is how you do it. This is how you get someone pumped to play your game. I'm not going to lie. I blast the song in my car with the windows down. Because I'm cool like that. The music was the perfect complement to this cute, fast-paced platformer, and speaking of cute, the damage sound Shantae makes when she's hurt as one of her transformations is just too much. I like the sound effects in the game overall, but there's just something about this one. Is it terrible of me that I want to make this monkey suffer just so I can enjoy its cute little squeak? Probably. But I'm gonna do it anyways. The Shantae games have always been pretty solid platformers, although I'm kind of iffy on the first game, but I blame the limitations of the Game Boy Color. The half-genie hero is no exception. Whether you're in a pyramid hopping from stone to precarious stone, or exploring an underwater sewer as a cute crustacean, Shantae's movements feel smooth and precise. Well, except when you're flying around as the harpy, those momentum-based physics took some getting used to and handled like butter on ice at first. Fighting enemies and bosses with the wide variety of weapons offered feels pretty satisfying too. Shantae can buy and upgrade a fairly sizable array of magic spells from the merchant that are no longer used as consumable items, like they were in the past games. Instead, there is now a magic meter that can be replenished by collecting green potion bottles throughout the levels, so she can light enemies on fire or dice them up in a flurry of scimitars to her heart's content. But mostly, she'll be attacking enemies using a more unique method. That's right, Mario jumps, Crash Bandicoot spins, and Shantae violently gives herself whiplash. It's kind of funny that in a game about genies and magic, the most overpowered weapon in the game is hair. Like, you can literally turn into an elephant that's capable of pushing gigantic stone blocks with its face, but you're still not as strong as your hair after washing it with some special shampoo. And what would a Shantae game be if you couldn't transform into a plethora of cute critters? Oh. True. Now we start seeing the Metroidvania side of things. As you progress, you gain the ability to change yourself into a slew of unique creatures that help Shantae in a variety of different situations, which, now that I think about it, would be a pretty useful trick in real life. Bye. Take the trash out yet? Genie power, activate! Mike, what are you doing? Pogo? What are you doing over here? Come here, little girl. Let's put you back. You silly ratter, you can't play video games. Here you go. Play with Java. You can do that. I did not think this one through. The monkey runs twice as fast as Shantae and can climb walls, the crab can scuttle along the bottom of the water and snip away seaweed, the bat can fly in a straight line and see in the dark, and the blobfish... It's just a blobfish. Just enjoy it. The only issue with having so many transformations to choose from is that some are hardly ever used. For example, I only played as a spider a handful of times to get some treasure, but much like spiders in real life, I kept it as far away from me as humanly possible. And then others become mostly obsolete when better options come along. Like, going back to playing as Sebastian felt like such a chore once Ariel was unlocked. All the levels are designed around the transformations mechanic, meaning if you can't access certain areas right now, you can come back later with a new ability and collect some super cool secret stuff. The greatest sin committed by Half Genie Hero is just how grindy the end game gets. You'll spend a lot of your time trying to collect a whole bunch of different MacGuffins in every level just so you can get the true ending, and it gets pretty monotonous pretty quickly. I feel like this can be forgiven since the game up to this point has just been so much fun, and the developers let you use a warp dance to quickly move from area to area in addition to a special whistle you can use to go directly to the level select screen whenever you want. I was a big old dumb and didn't actually use either of these until I was nearly done with the game. Which sounds vaguely like the issues I had with a certain other game. <laughs> when will I ever learn? So, if you couldn't tell by now, I like this game just a 
tiny bit, little bit. How much? I bought it three times. Once on Steam, so you know I can record. Again, for PS4, so I could get the soundtrack bundled with it. And again on PS Vita for reasons. Hey, Mike! Did you fall in? You've been in there for like 30 minutes. Other people need to use the bathroom too. Go away, I'm poopies right now. Yeah, okay, just just hurry it up, please. Yeah, yes, poopies. Having played every game in the series, I can safely say Half Genie Hero has been my favorite Shantae game to date. In fact, the combination of the catchy music, vibrant visuals, and solid gameplay might make this one of my most favorite Metroidvanias in quite some time. I found it hard to put the game down, and what's more, we got us some stretch goal goodness in the pipeline thanks to all the Kickstarter backers. Hero Mode is already available, which is a brutally hard mode for all the masochists out there. We'll be getting some additional costumes for Shantae, including one that pays homage to another way forward series, Mighty Switch Force, and then additional playable characters with their own unique stories and playstyles are soon to drop as well. Shantae Overload! With the addition of these new modes and content, along with the aforementioned music, art, and gameplay, I really think that Half Genie Hero might just be the strongest game in the series in terms of replayability and timelessness. Don't get me wrong, I enjoyed the other three games, but I feel like the devs just took that Shantae charm and turned it up to 11 here. Here's hoping that WayForward keeps the series alive with more games in the near future, but until then, let's just sit here and watch that genie shake her jewel maker a little bit longer. I really enjoyed my time with Shantae Half Genie Hero, and I found myself wanting to play the game again immediately to get all the achievements I missed on the first go around. And the prospect of new DLC and added content has just got me so stoked. Although the story was pretty weak, and the endgame grind was pretty off-putting, the music, art style, and gameplay more than make up for these shortcomings. That's why I award Half Genie Hero the rating of... Golden so, until next time, I'm Chill Pill, reminding you, if your underwear is dirty and you're too lazy to wash it, just turn it inside out. Boom! Just bought yourself another week until laundry day. Woo! you! Hey, you're still here. So, what do you think of the new Shantae? Do you like the direction they took the series this time around? Be sure to LCS and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Black Sheep Vigia for more sheepy updates. Also, question of the day, who would win in a genie free-for-all? The genie from Aladdin, Kazam, or Shantae? Fight it out in the comments below and we'll see you next time.